Um, to whittle it down, down to one Shakespeare play or character is difficult, but um, if I had to pick a character, probably Iago. I mean, I think the play should have been called Iago. The play's not about Othello. It's, it's about Iago and, and it's really his story and Othello is affected by Iago's um, story. But, but yeah, he's, he's, I don't like him, but he's a great character. Iago's a great character because you really want to kill him. Like you, you, you're reading the play or watching the, watching the play, you know, or watching it in the film version. You actually really want to kill him. He's so devious and so convincing and so conniving and so sincere in his false love for, for a fellow that, you know, that's the genius of, 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 I suppose, a great writer is where a character feels so real that you feel some emotion towards that character. So strong that if you saw Iago in the street, you, you might beat him up, you know, for being what he is, you know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of, it's exactly that, that, that Iago evokes such a strong emotional reaction in anyone who reads or watches that character. Personally, um, part of the problem with the way Shakespeare that's taught, in my view, and obviously we, we run a company called Hip Hop Shakespeare, which teaches Shakespeare, is, is this perception almost that what Shakespeare does is exceptional to him. What do I mean by that? So this classical language that exists, exists in every culture all around the world. So the average person who speaks traditional, normal Arabic can't understand classical Arabic that easily. Or when I was in Java, you know, I went to watch a classical Javanese play and the people watching it, even though they speak Javanese, can't understand it because it's classical Javanese. And so even if, if Shakespeare's put in a proper world context so people understand that this phenomenon is by no, by no means exclusive to him and it's kind of normal that as language evolves, you know, generations, uh, future generations will need it translating sort of or, or updating uh, for them. And that doesn't mean doing Shakespeare in youth speak and making it easy for the kids because that, in my experience, young people see right through that and they can tell that they're being patronised. It's about updating Shakespeare and making it relevant, just in the same way that Shakespeare updated stories like Hamlet that already existed or updated historical events like the histories that had already happened to make them relevant for his particular overwhelmingly illiterate, I might add, audience. Um, and so to me, Shakespeare needs to be taught in a way that makes him human and takes the 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 false reverence, in, in my view, off of him. And what do I mean by that? I mean that he's sort of perceived as this kind of elite academic, belongs to a particular sector of society type character, when in reality he wasn't that. He was the people's poet of his day, which is a function that, you know, hip hop in some way serves today. And I don't mean the commercial, nonsensical hip hop that we often see on TV, but I mean the genuine, what was coming out of New York in the early 70s or late 70s as a social uh, voice. And those same subject matters are still being dealt with by any uh, great contemporary poetry or any great classic poetry. And so for that reason, because of how well Shakespeare tackles the human condition uh, and how cleverly he deals with themes that are still very much relevant today, I think Shakespeare should be taught. But the way in which Shakespeare is taught should be, be updated because it takes very bad teaching to make Shakespeare boring. But that seems to be what we've accomplished. It's, it is about teaching uh, about Shakespeare and the world and within which he emerged, but it's also about understanding that he wrote performance poetry. So why is it the first time young people hear it, they're being asked to read it off of a page? You know, if I gave you Bob Marley lyrics or Led Zeppelin lyrics or, you know, Biggie Smalls' lyrics and I said, read them, and you hadn't heard the music, you might think it was boring. You might not understand it. If I gave you certain Wu-Tang lyrics, which is my favourite hip-hop group, you definitely wouldn't understand it. Like, it's cryptic almost. So you need to hear it perform, you need to get a sense of the rhythm, you need to understand all of that. And then you can sit down and read it and write a dissertation on it. But we sort of seem to be doing it backwards. We need to feel the rhythm in the words and the pulse in the words and the musicality of the words, as well as understanding who was Shakespeare talking to. You know, some of the swear words that are in Shakespeare, people don't understand now. You know, so we sanitise Shakespeare and we act like Elizabethan England was this place where, you know, we, for, we sort of overlook the fact that Shakespeare is so violent. Do you know what I mean? And there's so much misogyny and so much sex and so much backstabbing and power struggles. When rappers do that, it's called gangsterism, you know, promoting violence. When Shakespeare does it, he's a genius. And so we need to also understand that, you know, the times in which he existed, to understand how real that was to the times in which he existed. And I think all of those things would make Shakespeare not only more digestible, but more interesting. In fact, I know that from experience. You know, we've done hundreds of uh, educational workshops, projects, productions now on Shakespeare. And overwhelmingly, when, from where, wherever we've done it, you know, in the so-called more difficult areas of the country, Young people respond when it's made relevant. But like I said, if you do it in youth speak and patronize young people, they don't respond.